In this video, we're going to uh, discuss a subset of the context-free languages, the deterministic context-free languages. I need you to remember what a context-free language is and what determinism and non-determinism mean when it comes to push-down automata. So to recap, a deterministic push-down automata is one that has no choices in how it gets to an accepting or rejecting state. So it's very similar to the finite state machines. The two basic conditions are that our transition relation delta contains no competing transitions. So there's no, if I, if I have one option where I see an A in the string and an A on the stack, I might transition over to some other state, then there's no other option with the same um, stack and input alphabet options for me to go somewhere else. The other condition is that whenever we are in an accepting state, we have no way to move out of that accepting state without consuming any input or looking at the stack. So we don't have any eps, eps, whatever transitions out of that state. So basically, as we're progressing through the pushdown automata, we don't have any choices between options at any point in time. And when we get to an accepting configuration, we stop and accept. There are no ways to move out into a rejecting configuration. Another important base definition will be the concept of a language where we have an end of string marker. So we're going to use the dollar sign as a special symbol, often in this course, and that'll be used as an end of the string marker. So for instance, if I have this, the, the language ANBN, then the language ANBN with an end of string marker will have strings that look like this. So the dollar symbol in the uh, when I've written it down as L dollar sign simply means language that consists of only the single string, which is one dollar sign. And because that is a finite language, it is therefore obviously regular and therefore context free. And we know that the context free languages are closed under concatenation. So we know that if we have any context free language L, then L dollar sign will definitely be context-free as well. So it doesn't add any power as far as the context-free languages are concerned, but it's useful for us because when we design push-down automata, often when we want to potentially handle doing something when we're at the end of the string, we'll put in an EPS transition in our um, push-down automata. Now, the problem is with that is that can be taken even when we're not at the end of the string. So what we do instead is we assume an end of string marker, dollar sign like that, and then these transitions change to dollar sign transitions so that we can only take them when we have definitely consumed all of the input. So obviously this dollar sign end of string marker wouldn't work for a language that contained actual dollar signs, but throughout this course we'll use it as a special symbol. So to show how the end of string marker can make it easier to build a deterministic pushdown automata for a language, we'll look at the language that consists of A and B N, which is context free, but we'll also union it with a string that consists of any number of A's. Now this machine here on the left, and you can pause and verify, will accept the, the language L. However, we have a problem where we have a competing transition here and here, so this is not deterministic. If we have an end of string marker, now, it's very easy for us to decide whether we've seen a bunch of A's, as we've seen here, and then when we get to the end, whether we see a B or there are no B's in the string and we've seen the end of string marker. Uh, this means that all of our transitions here are non-competing, and we also have no way to get out of a, a, an accepting state with an EPS transition. So this machine on the right here is a deterministic pushdown automata that accepts the language L. Um, dollar sign, so L with end of string markers. So with those facts, we can define a language to be a deterministic context-free language if and only if L dollar sign can be accepted by a deterministic pushdown automata. So basically, can we build a pushdown automata that has no choices at any way through its path, so it operates deterministically, that accepts the language if we allow the machine to know when the end of the string is. If that's the case, then we have a deterministic context-free language, 
And we know that if we have a deterministic context-free language, then it must be possible to do that. So just like the context-free languages, which we've already discussed, the deterministic context-free languages have their own set of closure properties. Now, they're not particularly important for the course, but some interesting facts are that the deterministic context-free languages are not closed under union or intersection, like the context-free languages are closed under union. So what this means is that if I take a deterministic context-free language and then another one and union them, I will definitely get a context-free language because the deterministic context-free languages are a subset of the context-free languages, so this closure property does apply, but I am not guaranteed to get a deterministic context-free language. I may end up with a context-free language that is not deterministic context-free. Another interesting closure property, and we will use this one later in this video, is the fact that unlike the context-free languages as a total set, the deterministic context-free languages as a set is closed under complement. So what that means is whilst I can complement a context-free language and not be sure what I'm going to get, whether it is context-free or deterministic context-free, if I complement a deterministic context-free language, then the resulting language is guaranteed to be deterministic context-free. So remember that, that because we are going to use that fact uh, later in this video. So we can obviously realise that the deterministic context-free languages is not the same set as the regular languages because we just discussed a context-free but not regular language built from A and B N, which was deterministic context-free. So we know that these two sets are not equal. Our question was whether deterministic context-free languages represent all context-free languages. Now, it turned out that with the regular languages, the deterministic and non-deterministic finite or finite state machines didn't give us any extra power. It'll turn out in this case, and we'll show that in the next slide, that non-determinism does actually add power for context-free languages, because we'll prove that this is not the case. So, our proof that not all context-free languages are deterministic, and the easy way to prove that not all context-free languages are deterministic is to provide an example of a context-free language which is not a deterministic context-free language. So this is our counterexample. The set of strings made by, of A's followed by B's followed by C's where either the number of A's and B's are not equal or the number of C, B's and C's are not equal. We show in class that we can build a context-free language, uh, sorry, uh, uh, we can build a pushdown automata to accept this language, so L is definitely context-free. Now, our assumption is that L is deterministic context-free. What follows from that assumption is that if it is deterministic context-free, then its complement must also be deterministic context-free. So we find the complement of L and define it as L dash. Now this language is the set of all strings where we have A's, B's and C's, where the number of A's, B's and C's are equal, and the set of all strings that we can build with A's, B's and C's, where they do not satisfy the regex A star, B star, C star. So where some of the letters are out of, that, out of order. Now, if L dash is deterministic context-free, so I'm going to say DCF, if L dash is deterministic context free, then it is also context free, which means that the intersection of L with a regex will give us a context free language because the context free languages are closed under intersection with the regular languages. So L, L dash, L prime, sorry, being context free means that this L double prime here is also context free. The problem is, is when you look at what L prime intersected with A star, B star, C star is, you'll readily realise that it is A, N, B, N, C, N. And we've already proven that A, N, B, N, C, N is not context free. The problem is, is that our assumption here has led us to the concept that this language is context free. However, we know that's not the case, that's a contradiction. So therefore, L must not be 
deterministic context free. However, we showed that it is context free. So now we have this language, which I'm going to highlight again, which is context free, but not deterministic context free. So therefore, the context free languages is a strictly larger set than the deterministic context free languages. And the reason we know that is that because is because every deterministic context free language is trivially a context free language, because we can build a pushdown automata for it. So we've looked at the Chomsky hierarchy before in this course. Now we're going to look at a small zoomed in area with a little bit more detail. So this is the hierarchy from the context free languages down. On the outset, we have all context free languages. So we might have languages like this one we showed here before, where it is context free, but not deterministic context free. And where we've talked before about ambiguous um, languages and shown that this is also a, an inherently ambiguous context free language. That means that we cannot possibly build a, an unambiguous grammar that generates that language. A subset of the context free languages is the in, not non inherently ambiguous context free languages. So things like um, the even length palindromes. We haven't shown that in this video, but it is true that the deterministic context free languages are, is a proper subset of those. And we know trivially that the regular languages are a subset of the deterministic context free languages. If that fact escaped you, think about the fact that any pushdown, uh, so any finite state machine can be converted into a deterministic finite state machine. And a deterministic finite state machine is really just a special case of a deterministic pushdown automata, which doesn't use the stack. So we can easily, from any finite state machine, construct an equivalent pushdown automata. If we have a deterministic finite state machine, the resulting PDA will be deterministic. So obviously the regular languages are a proper subset of the deterministic context free languages. So what we've talked about in this video is what a deterministic context free language is. We've briefly mentioned some of its closure properties. Um, those will be dealt with a little bit more thoroughly in the tutorials. And we've also dealt with the fact that the deterministic context free languages are a proper subset of the context free languages. And we proved that using, ex using an example of a language which was context-free, but which we proved was not deterministic context-free.